Hello, Ms. Gracia. We are in group number two, and today we're going to talk about how are the most created. My name is Maria Belen Torres. My name is Julio Pérez. My name is Luis Antonio. My name is Robert Torres. And I am Ricardo Sorriero. Well, Robert is going to start the presentation with the introduction. So, first of all, what is a GMO? GMO is a genetically modified organism. We all, we every day talk, listen talk about the people about the GMOs. So, do you want to know how a GMO is made? Uh, actually, you are not alone. A lot of people ask that question. So, it's one of the top questions about biotechnology. There are different ways that plants can be genetically engineered. Organisms whose genome has been engineered in the laboratory in order to favor the expression of desired physiological traits or the production of desired biological products. We will use this story of the papaya in Hawaii to, to walk in through one of them. In genetic modif modifications, however, recombination genetic technologies are employed to produce organisms whose genomes have been precisely altered at the molecular level, usually by the conclusion of genes from unrelated species of organisms that code for traits that would not be obtained easily through conventional selective breeding. So we have four steps. Um, the first step will be present with for my partner Charer. So hi everybody from NIF. We're going to talk about the first step of the genetic modifier. So which is to determine where the genetic engineering is the most effective way to solve all the plant problem. So First, we're going to use the history of the, papa of the rainbow papaya in Hawaii to illustrate how the process is made. So, first of all, we're going to introduce how was the problem in Hawaii. So, for centuries, traditional land breeding has been to suppress environmental stress such as drugs and well provided to taste and nutrition. The reasons to develop the genials are not different today, but the genials can be created more quickly and more precisely than the normal, normal ways. Other breeding methods can more quickly and more precisely, more precisely take decades to produce results and they're not able as focusing on the genetic trait or isolating the solution to a specific problem. So, since the 1940s, the Hawaiian papaya history has been battling the problem. The structure and the rapid square papaya brings both virus. The PCRP deforms the papaya fruit and the junk plant destroys the capacity of producing fruit low. The PCRP is transmitted by insects that feed on the fruit. Well, there are some methods here, there are some methods that work for use it to control all the problems that GMOs are designed to foresee, like pests, for example, the virus, pathogens, also insects. There are also the which mature plants we do not design in our, in our crops. And also the climate, the climate that drugs and with the problem with the climate change, this is necessary to confront this problem. So, Back into the, uh, the history, the people tried to develop the extractive part. In the early 1960s, the farmers moved the papaya pollution from Hawaii Island to Hawaii to another from Oahu to Puna. But the virus ultimately reached Puna with the contaminated papaya. Other methods here were either included using insecticide form, insect spraying the virus, creating, creating natural inoculation, putting the virus under trees, but also destroying the infected trees, but the virus just continued to spread. 
This is part in 53, 53 million pounds of fresh papaya for green produce in 1992. Of fresh herbs in Puna, but in 1998, the amount just halved the house in 26 million pounds. This affects both economically to the farmer, or the consumer of the fresh papaya and the population of the way. And the papaya juice, the papaya fruit, the papaya juice, and every presentation that we consume papaya, as well as smoothies and other products. Also, we could be by biotechnology is now available to find, and the farmer turned to the genetical engineering building at the 1985, so they can find one, one of the genetic problems to solve this, to solve the papaya problem. So, for the next step, my friend Maria Brenna is going to talk to you about the step two. Hello, I'm going to talk about how to identify the, the gene. Well, this is the second step, but it is not less important. So, identify the gene or genetic material that would solve the problem, like providing resistance to disease or pests, and study the genetic makeup of the plant that needs to treat. Researchers and farmers uh, had to find a way to make a plant resistance to the deadly virus, the PV. BRC. This virus resistance was the genetic trait needed to solve the problem. So researcher, researchers knew that if plant contains retained genetic material from the virus within their own DNA, they were protected. If they can insert a copy of the gene from the virus itself into the papaya genetic makeup, the plants would be protected. It's like the same when we have flu, we use a human flu that is the virus of flu, but we are protected uh, against that virus. So next, uh, my partner Julia is going to talk about the third step. Well, so the third step is remove the trait from a donor organism and implant it to the plant DNA. We see before that the, the DNA that we needed was found in a donor organism. In the event that this segment of DNA qualified for is the resistance for PVRC virus. So, well, first of all, do you want, do you know what is a DNA? Well, DNA is the, is a, the genetic material of every uh, living organism in this world. And this material have the information of all the metabolic and all the production of proteins and everything that the, the, the organisms need to produce to live. So their DNA, the DNA is segmented and divided in some in different genes. So each gene qualified for different uh, production of proteins that have a different uh, function on the organism. So the researchers found the segment of DNA, the gene that, that qualified for the production of the protein that they needed to make a plant resistance to this virus that is the PRSV. And well, they, they isolated the PRSV gene from the virus itself, and they they needed a way to keep the genetic material into the papaya plant's own DNA because they needed the the, the gene to be into the DNA of the papaya, so then the papaya plant could produce the protein that they need to to make the plant resistance to PVRC. And with then researchers, researchers they deployed a commonly used technique in biotechnology and other projects, and it's called transformation. In transformation, 
is just a process by which a copy of the genetic material from a specific trait is inserted themselves because you need a way to insert the gene and it's a physical thing so you have here the gene and you have to keep the gene and insert the gene into the the papaya genome you have to insert into the cells and then into the nucleus of the cell so this is the way to you have to use or, or they used in this in this project to keep the DNA of the that qualified for the production of the protein into the DNA of the papaya plant. And well, there are many ways to transform itself, but in this case, the researchers use a high-speed particle bombardment method. You can see it here. It's like a yes or no, but. Uh, this high-speed particle bombardment method works through a high-pressure insertion device. So the gene from the virus was inserted into the DNA of the papaya event, but that was not easy. Uh, they they try a lot of, of of times to do it, but that not didn't that didn't result for the first time so they finally they 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 inserted it into the dna of the papaya event but the genetic material made the plant resistance to the rings of virus the pdrc because then the papaya have the the gene that qualified for the protein production that makes the plant again and resistance and then the plant have in all the plant in the leaf all the plant have that protein that that makes the plant resistance to the to to this virus so just like uh, the researchers were able to successfully transform just 17 plants and well these plants contain this gene from the virus and produce the protein from the virus that help plants to become resistant to the virus infection but how are they going to do what are they going to do with just 17 plants if they should give uh, one plant at least for each farmer or if a, if a farmer have like two, 200 plants of papaya infected they have to replace it for other 200 papaya plants that are resistant to the virus so they just had to follow a, a process of, of making like more plants by each one of these plants they they reproduce the plants to obtain a lot of plants well this was the third step and the fourth step is it will be will be explained by my partner Oliver Hello teacher, um, I'm going to talk about the first step, that is uh, what we need to seed and test. So the final step uh, is to plant the seeds and carefully test the resulting plants. Uh, one line of the plants demonstrate the consistency or resistance to the virus. <coughs> After several years of testing, it was determined that this line performed well uh, on the farms. <coughs> it was safe for people to eat and was a uh, commercial quality. Uh, success was achieved. Uh, one variety of transgenic papaya, about 125,000 pounds of marketable fruit per acre per year. Um, 25 times uh, the amount of, of fruit produced per acre by a uh, non-GM variety infected by PR, PRSB. So this test took about seven years, including food, safety, and environmental review uh, by the FDA, USPA, and EPA.
Uh, once regulatory approval was gotten, uh, the farmers choose to start using the new papaya seeds. So the results, uh, the harvesting of the new PRSB irresistible uh, papaya began in 1998, and by uh, 2002, the industry had rebounded it, producing 46 uh, million pounds of fresh papaya. This kept the private papaya industry alive in Hawaii and ensured consumers uh, to have access to high quality papaya and papaya juice on a reasonable cost. So, as you know, nowadays uh, we have a, a, a lot of uh, products that we eat uh, all the days. For example, uh, Coca Cola uh, is made with um, uh, these GMOs, GM, GM most products. So I think that is something indispensable in our lives because uh, as, 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 the, as the corn, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, seeds that are plants uh, and these seeds are, um, these seeds are um, a trade uh, with this process uh, to create uh, uh, GMO seeds. Um, so now uh, my friend uh, Robert is going to give you the conclusion. So you already see the so the four steps to the how is a GMO GMO rate, and I hope you you have your own conclusions. But our our conclusion are that genetic engineering allows the introduction of pure virus resistance without altering other traits of the papaya or changing the plants in other ways. The plants were, were exactly the same on nutrition and safety. 17% of papaya that is sell on streets in GM papaya GM papaya has been grown and consumed in the United States for more than a decade. This is just one of GMO story. So we hope you we hope you we hope we are we could teach you teach you or something new this day. Um, uh, my friend Chariero wants to tell you something about the topic. Is uh, is his own, own conclusion, and please pay attention to that. So, as we as we see all the process of the GMOs, I want to talk to you about the basic part of the importance of GMOs. As we can see, we have a problem with the papaya, and we want to do we search a problem. We have a problem and a solution. So. There's no so controversial about the GMO that was gathered, so that, that, that you probably know or you can do for that. But I really want to understand that we are in problems and we need solutions. So the GMOs can be a solution. I'm not saying it's the only one, the ultimate or something like that. This can be a pro professional solution to the problem of the malnutrition around the world, to the problem of the climate change. So and pesticide and the evolution of new of the new <coughs> pathogen. So I want to wonder. I am asking you to ask to the public how do you think the pro the problems and we can solve it with this or there also can be a solution. So the main idea, main point of the all the videos were to create awareness about the GMOs, how the people feel about this, and how this can solve the problem around the world. So to end it, to end with the presentation, my friend Robert is going to say the final words. So thank you for your attention. So, just for end the presentation, I want to show show, show you our bibliography or our reference, and these are our interesting links. I I want to you see that that link because it have a, a lot of of important information that could could help you to understand better the the GMO. Um, 
it's good for your knowledge. So that is it. Thank you for your attention and have a good night.